Hello again, everyone. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. I want to do a brief episode today and tell you a little bit about these G-Shock watches here and show you some of the diagnostic screens available on these. Now, a lot of G-Shock watches uh, behave the same way when you get into these diagnostic screens, but I'm going to show you on this particular lineup of watches. These are all variations of the GWM500 and the GWM530. They all use module 3405, so all of these watches will just behave exactly the same as each other. I'm just going to pull one out at random, like this one, and show you how to get into the diagnostic screens. Now, this is not going to enhance your user experience very much. Um, it's, it's just informational stuff. But if you wanted to know everything there is to know about G-Shocks, this is just another little thing that might be handy to, to, to know. Also, I suppose I should tell you, this is not in the manual, so that's why I'm showing it to you right now. Okay, here you go. This is um, usually on these watches uh, in the manual, like there, there's four buttons uh, on, on the face here, and then this one here is a light button down here. So these, uh, these buttons are usually labeled A, B, C, and D. And in order to get into the diagnostics, you have to press multiple buttons at a time. In fact, you have to press three at a time. So uh, we're going to skip A, skip B, skip C, and skip D and show you what happens when you get into the diagnostics that way. Also, you know, if, if I were to press this button here uh, slightly before trying to press others, I would change modes. And so, you know, you got to be a little bit... Uh, well, you, you, you got to think it through if you're going to try to press multiple buttons at once so you don't press one too early and, and, and not get into your diagnostic mode. So I try to choose something like, like this adjust button. You can push this and it takes a moment to react. And so maybe I push this first and then push the others. But, you know, let, let's see how I can do this. Okay, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to press every button except A. See how well I can do this. So, oh, it worked. Okay, so right here, what is this telling me? Well, this refers to the uh, atomic time transmitter that this watch is trying to receive. So this one is in Japan, and it broadcasts, uh, well, you know, the, the data that this watch is trying to receive from that transmitter when it's in range is a continuous 40 kilohertz carrier wave. So that's just telling you that's what it's trying to receive. Now, if I push this button here, this uh, C button, it still has a J for Japan, and that refers to the other transmitter in Japan, which is uh, putting out a 60 kilohertz carrier wave. Push it again, and that's a U for the United States. So WWVB in the United States also is putting out a 60 kilohertz uh, signal there. This one from Germany with a G, that's, uh, that refers to a transmitter that I believe is 77.5 kilohertz. And then this one... L, I think that's the one in the UK. And so these are just references to the, the, the transmitters that this is trying to receive in the multiband six uh, function of the watch, okay? Uh, so if I press this mode button, I'll get back to normal timekeeping mode. Now I'm gonna try to press every button except that one marked reverse. So let's see if I can do that. Ah, uh, okay, and this is an LCD uh, display test. So some of the LCD segments in the screen are, uh, you know, are, are visible right now, not all of them. But if I push this forward button here, um, then it shows me, what does that say? 3179. Normally I would think that would be the module number, but uh, that, that, that's a, a different module. So I'm not sure why, that's, why it shows that. But if I push this forward again, okay, it's showing me Denver is my home time right now. Push it again. Okay, and there, now I have the LCD diagnostic screen in which every segment of LCD is visible right now. So you can check and make sure that they're all working right here on this screen. Push it again and I get some patterns where you know not all of them are visible. And now I'm back to my home screen. Okay, and the next test, I'm gonna try and do it this way. Let's see what I can do here. Okay. TLT for tilt. It's the tilt test. This watch has a sensor inside, a little mechanical thing deep inside the movement, which uh, this, this senses when you tilt the watch towards yourself and it can turn on the automatic backlight. And this is the, the, the test of that tilt sensor. See if I level it out, those, uh, those eight digits go away, the four digits that are showing the number eight. Uh, they go away, but if I tilt it up, then... They come back, and that's just showing me that the switch that turns on that automatic backlight seems to be working correctly. Okay, 
And finally, I'm going to try to press every button except that mode button and see how I do. Okay. And this says SLR. That's the solar panel test. Because as you know, there's a solar panel built into the face of this watch that keeps the power source charged. And right now it's not showing me anything except uh, I want to know if, if that solar panel is reacting to anything. So the way I do that is I just cover it up. Uh, so now it's going to be dark in there. And when I let... Uh, now, now it's showing me those digits of the number 8. And that just means that the solar cell did something when I changed the lighting there. And uh, it doesn't go on and off like the tilt test, but it just shows me, okay, I'm done. I'm done with the solar test. <laughs> and that's it. So those are the diagnostic screens. As I said, other G-Shock watches do similar things, but I thought I'd just show you these right now. And uh, yeah, wasn't in the manual, but now you know. All right, thanks for watching this episode of The Good Timekeeping Show, and I'll have more to come very soon.